podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Welcome everybody, this is Joe from Celebrate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. I'm right now here in my cramped study again and I'm talking to Johannes, who's the co-founder of a VR startup from the lovely city of Mainz, where I was born. And um, i like to welcome him. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, um, glad to have the opportunity to introduce Flying Shapes to your audience. Um, great. Totally my pleasure. At first, we should start uh, saying you guys are actually a B2B startup, so you help other companies with VR. But before we get into your actual product, can you tell us a little bit about what you did before? And disclaimer, I stalked you on LinkedIn, so I've seen a lot. <laughs> um, sure. Um, so you learned that I'm actually a physicist. Um, so I studied physics and I even did my PhD in particle physics uh, at CERN. And uh, then I had the like the choice to stay in science or, well, in my case, I wanted to, uh, my other option was to start a company. And so since I decided that science is not not predictable enough, <laughs> I decided to start a startup instead. So after my PhD, I had to decide whether I wanted to, to start a company now or, or stay in science. And so um, the time was right for me to do this, to take this step. And um, I browsed through a number of ideas that I had back then and looked for co-founders. And actually it was here in Mainz at the so-called Gründertreffen, so the founder meetup um, where I, met my co-founder Jonas we knew each other from from the university but we didn't know about each other that each of us wanted to start a company and it was actually on that particular date that we decided okay we start we we, we need to start something together we just need to figure out what it's going to be and then we browsed through a number of like technologies and and ideas and um it was 2016, so VR for the mainstream users was pretty new back then. And we we tried out, uh, I think, the Oculus first and then the HTC Vive, and we in immediately fell in love with the technology and and we, we saw a huge potential and thought, okay, this is going to be the future and we need to, to do something for this. And um, then it took us quite a while of, of brainstorming, of trying out ideas. Uh, we went to two meetups, uh, to a hackathon, and until we came up, or like in, in in subsequent steps, with the idea to build a CAD application for product designers, transportation designers, architects, because VR has the the huge benefit that you immediately have a three D impression of what you what you create or what what surrounds you. So this is what like triggered us from the first time and 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 yeah really gave us this this momentum um to to get this started this project first and then the company I see um since our audience is more than 90% not from Germany and like two thirds not from Europe, we might want to give them some background, especially if they are not in design. So um, just a tiny bit more information on CERN. Oh, sure. Um, CERN. Um, well, for those who've seen. Um, sorry, I, I don't get I, I can't. Ah, right. Uh, for for those who've seen the Big Bang Theory, they they may know know about CERN. It's actually a, a particle science laboratory. It's a it's it's one of the great international laboratories in Europe, besides uh, the European Space Agency. And there's like um, particle physics research going on. They discovered the Higgs boson in 2012. So it's um, it's like one of the coolest places to be in high energy and in, in particle physics. Um, this is where where the frontier of research is is redefined right now and has been over the last years. Mm, very fancy place. Uh, 
before we get to the point where this actually connects to what you guys are doing now, we just may want to add that CAD CAD is computer assisted design, right? Uh, computer aided design, exactly. So it's about constructing, in our case, designing um, 3D or 2D objects on on a computer. So before you did that with technical drawing, um, very fancy. It was took quite some time to get into this. Um, and 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 actually, my mother taught that at school, by the way, um, with the first the classic version and then CAD. Um, but yeah, this is it's about like constructing and and designing products that reach from I don't know can be layout plans for computer chips, but up to like nuclear power plants and all details. Uh, but of course, also the design. So you would also model the exterior design of a car, for example, in a CAD application. I see, I see. And uh, we actually met in person um, last time at Entrepreneur University, and I was uh, taken aback a little bit physicist phd at cern and then he's doing computer ad assisted design aided design i'm sorry computer aided design and um the question was for me instantly how does this connect and actually he said that it has a pretty big connection because um in 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 the part of physics you're working with, you have a lot of abstract data and want to make it visible, understandable, right? The, that's kind of the connection. Uh, that for me, there are a few links and also for Jonas um, that have also to do with the, the fact that it's going to be or that it's a VR application. But I came up with another link uh, only recently because for my diploma thesis, so before I did my PhD, I actually worked on... Um, yeah, it's a bit too detailed probably, but on track reconstruction. So trying to figure out which tracks charged particles took through the detector. And to do this, you need to know the, the geometry of the detector. So you, you need to think of something that's as big as, well, a bigger office building, but it's like packed with technology. And you need to know exactly where, like on the sub millimeter um, level, where exactly which which part of the detector is located. And I didn't work with CAD data, but I worked with something that was derived from CAD data. So that was also like a connection point that I came up with only recently. Um, besides that, the yeah, the processing of, of, of especially the real-time processing of huge data sets is something that we did at CERN, um, which is a very crucial for, for VR because we you always have to keep the frame rate at a certain level and so the the real time aspect so i i need to define when <clears throat> my whatever i pro do in, in in terms of processing in terms of data processing when that's done this is absolutely cru crucial and this is something that we can take from our CERN experience because there are also real time data processing with high speed computing is is one of the things that we did there um plus cad of course um CAD itself has a lot of maths uh, to, you need a lot of math to understand um, the, yeah, the underlying princ principles. And this is something um, like differential geometry that you also in parts learn in, in your physics um, studies. And um, then we also knew, <laughs> Again, that was my diploma thesis. My supervisor is a computational geometry professor here in Mainz. And so also there we learned about Bezier curves and, and all that kind of um, yeah, maths and, and algorithms that you need for CAT. So there are a few joints where, where the step was, or that make the step kind of logical for us at least like looking back at it and um so that's like these three or four points are clearly a connection from our certain work or from our work at the university to our startup that we now do uh, i have to smile a little bit a professor in computational what uh geometry uh 
<laughs> Can you explain a little bit what that means? Because I got a business background and I got no clue what this is. Um, well, I hope I, I, I picked the right word there in English, but um, uh, well, I mean, it's about <laughs> um, it's computer graphics and computational geometry. And um, so you, you, you I, I don't know if I can really fully explain that. I'm, I'm sorry for all the computational geometry people out there, but um, uh, from my understanding, it's for example, if you want to, um, if you want to, in in our case, Tesla, it, it's 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 a bit complex to from from my perspective to even explain it. So we have like um, rounded curves, for example, and they are defined as very simple equations mathematically. So you could write that down in in like a line of equation. That's simple, at least if you're used to, like, theoretical physics, and, but, the <laughs> the computer needs to, <laughs> sorry, the computer needs to. I mean, when you when you draw this on the screen, it's it's not going to be this equation anymore, obviously, because it's it's it needs to, needs to be rendered to pixels, because everything that's displayed on a screen, for example, or also in a VR headset, is in the end like just a set of pixels. And this transition from the, the the mathematical formula to the pixels is um, something that that depending on what you do is called rendering or tessellation. And um, doing this efficiently, for example, is is one of the things that one one might look at. Or there are other um, there are other use cases where you where you combine computation and geometry what i know my professor worked on is 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 packing um packing circles or packing discs if you imagine you had like a bunch of of actual discs and wanted to um to pack them as it in a circle that's as small as possible or maybe maybe better for 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 your audience to understand um that was also a use case let's say you want to you want to f find out um how big uh, sorry i, I need to re re rephrase that um so there's there's from my understanding, there's a kind of regulation that says the trunk size of a car is defined as the number of defined volumes that you can put in there. Imagine like you had to 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 make a stack of, of like milk boxes and the number of milk boxes tells you, okay, this trunks, th th there are like 100 milk boxes that fit, fit into this trunk and this is how we define the size of the, the car trunk. And that obviously makes it necessary to like kind of optimize how you position these milk boxes in the trunk because you want to to have that number as high as possible because you want to say okay our our trunk is like that big and people tend to probably want bigger trunks so you say you say okay the better i can fit these these milk boxes into my trunk the better it is and that's a kind of optimization and and how you do that from a computational aspect that's also something that that professor uh, worked on so from my understanding these are like cases where maybe i'm 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 not fully right there that this is like still computational geometry but it's it's at least related so yeah that kind of let's say algorithms that have something to do with with geometry like geometrical objects and uh, where you where you for example want to optimize things make them faster make them optimal i think yeah maybe that gives a an idea totally fine totally fine um let's get a little bit to flying shapes um people who are watching this youtube video will now see a little bit of uh, video footage from designing of a car in your software and can you tell us a little bit about 
what are you guys doing what's different about it and how you approach all the problems with your startup <laughs> that, that's a huge question actually a set of questions so uh here at startup right that oh, we don't do the small questions <laughs> I, I i try to to like work through them um so what what flying shapes does well maybe maybe i should start like introducing the the product itself because i only teased that the the software that we build and and now sell flying shapes is a, an entire cat application so it's a standalone software that you can just download and uh, and run if you have a sufficiently um, powerful PC or laptop and a mainstream VR headset. And we are one of the first providers of such a tool that allow you to design entirely in VR. So you could start with the first sketch, uh, like really sketching in, in 3D. That uh, That's something that you uh, saw in the video and uh, from there on you can go to the next step and refine your sketches with um, like I like I mentioned these um, these parametric parametric curves um, that can be for, in our case it's B splines technically but just let's just think of them as like very smooth curves that can be used up to the production stage that's in like from an industry perspective and from these curves on you create the surfaces that define the for example the exterior of your car or the the surface of your seat that you might model or the exterior of your coffee machine or your piece of jewelry your chair there are many use cases where we see our application being used um, and where people can benefit from that like direct spatial impression that you have. So, <clears throat> um, and like I said, this is a standalone software, so you can download it, get started right away. You can, of course, import things. So if you, let's say you have, um, that's a common use case in the automotive industry, you have a called package. Um, that's, for example, a set of wheels. You can import that in any CAD format. Um, and then start modeling around it so you have your your wheel position defined and can start constructing your exterior design around that and um, from there like i said you can you can create the curves you can create this the surfaces you can refine them you can review them so that saves you a lot of model building because classically at some point at least in this process people would start building um building physical models um, at some point, there will be clay models that are made from an industrial kind of clay. Um, they are first, I think, one to four size, then they go up to one by one size. So you can imagine that there's going like creating a one by one sized clay model of a car is, of course, quite costly, quite like time consuming. So all these steps are very yeah, very costly and take a lot of time. And you can save a lot of them. That's at least what we, where we see a huge potential in the software. If the designer can work in 3D all the time and not only see his model in 3D when, when they finally built this physical model from it. And then at some point we, see, we say, okay, when the design is, is finished, in the current version, not yet, we're not yet there, but that this is where we want to get when when the design is done you can export it and of course refine it again if you if you need but at the end you'll either be able to like give it to 3d printing or production or give it to people with more technical cat tools that um do some technical refinements um if there are requirements that need to be still uh, enforced so this is where we position the software. This is where we see the the biggest benefit. And actually, that's like that um, being able to see everything in space, like in in three D. We think that makes a lot of difference because um, I, I've just recently seen a video from a designer. I don't know which. It was one of the big manufacturers, um, uh, the German ones, and he said. You know, this, that's, 
this sp special moment when you first see, like you've been working and refining, working on the design, refining it for weeks, and then there's this magical moment when you first see the the clay model that's produced from this, and um, this this told me that there is a lot to benefit from from something like flying shapes, because of course. I fully understand why he said that because it's it it really is an entirely different um, feeling that you get for the for the design when you really see it in three d in front of you. But this is something that we can offer from the first po like from the starting point. And this is only one of the benefits because if you work in in flying shapes, we don't have this in the release yet, but we have it like here. Um, you can collaborate in, in real time with people from different places. So it's not only the design review, but even the modeling that can be done from remote locations uh, soon. And people will see each other as if they were working in the same room, just in virtual reality. And this is also something where we say, okay, these <clears throat> these uh, OEMs from, from, for example, the car industry can benefit a lot from such a tool. Um, because, yeah, people can collaborate. If you say, okay, I need some expertise for, for this particular like design feature, but the colleague is located in, I don't know, Los Angeles. Well, I need to keep the, keep the time difference in mind, but besides that, it's no problem. You can just join and, um, and, and do the adjustments or review and make some changes immediately, and that's it. So it's, it's going to like open a whole new chapter of of, for example, automotive design. That pretty much sounds like it is um, a VR design tool plus a VR cooperation tool. Yes, I would say so. Um, so design is, we, I mean, we, we, we have used the word CAD, but it's not only CAD, it's also that sketching aspect. Um, and um, and reviewing, we have actually dedicated tools for for design review um, activities. Um, so there's there's like it's more than CAD. It's the the CAD capabilities are a little limited now, but on the other hand, we have a, a wider range of like steps that we can cover or where users can benefit from the software already now. I mean, it's, it's only been released very recently in the first, um, uh, in the first version, um, but we, we are still working on, on features that are added uh, on more uh, hardware that we, that we will support. And like I said, the collaboration is already there in the testing version, but it's not yet uh, ready for release. So we'll ha um, release that next year at some point. Um, there's, a lot to come still but yeah that's that's like what i would say we we cover um designing collaboration reviewing sketching so like concept modeling this is where i would position our software so it's a little bit more holistic approach which actually would help to accelerate uh the development of new uh products right yeah, uh, that's that's what we what we absolutely see in this. So, um, like I said, there's the the benefit that we see from the automotive users, but also if you think of an industrial designer, there we say, okay, very soon you should be able to cover the entire process in that software. So, like from the start until you you can send the final design to your customer to your client. Um, and also in the intermediate step, do the review. So you you can send your client, or if he has a VR headset at his uh, in his office, it's it's possible for him to lo just log in. You can also um, then join with a um, mobile device um, or from a desktop PC. But the the full experience is 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 only available in VR. But this is like I said, also for a client possible to join and review. Uh, what your what the design team is working on, and um, yeah, so I think it's it's going to be the yeah the like the perfect solution for a small design studio and a huge benefit for for a bigger company. 
for maybe I I should add that to the to the car manufacturer use case. Today it's they they have a very um, split up process. So there's the designer who works in 2D. In many cases, they work maybe on an iPad or in Photoshop or classically on paper. Um, there's the CAD designer who takes the like the designs, the renderings, as it's called, from the designer and transforms them to 3D. Um, so to CAD model, in some cases, this can be a polygon model, but so uh, which is um, easier to build but harder to to change let's say and um, uh, then this is going to be like modeled in clay and these three like these are three different roles at least maybe there, there can be one more for the final cat model that's that's going to be more like precise and has to to fulfill certain requirements so there are three to four roles in that process that are involved that have interfaces and that's also something where we see that or we claim that in flying shapes these people can be like brought closer together and their like their areas of expertise will overlap so they can collaborate inside the same tool don't need to switch from one tool to the other and um they can work cl more closely together, so such that the like the losses of information from each step or at each interface will be way less, or at least, uh, or or maybe even completely gone, because people can work together at the at the same time in that common environment. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uh, before we go and talk a little bit more about the startup itself, just uh, who is still listening out there? Which type of people should mm, should have a look at your software? What what type of people is your, your client base? Uh, which one would you address like personally right now? Um, I think that for any product or industrial designer who works on like objects that are in 3D, so in most cases that that's the case for, or, or in many cases that that's the case for a product designer, um, it makes sense to look at flying shapes. Because even I, I think, and and that's also what, and like a view that we share with with other people from from the same like industry, that there's going to be a transition to VR. It may not be the tools that are there today, but we will see see a fundamental change in the 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 tools that are used. So if you work in product design, industrial design, transportation design, or maybe also also interior design and maybe also architecture, um, it may make sense to take a look at flying shapes because um, you can benefit a lot from from the improved process with respect to classic CAD. You get rid of all that abstraction that you have between the like the the two D surface on the screen. And the 3D model that you build, and uh, we we would say that this is such a such a great improvement that at some point in the future, um, a lot of of this of like design uh, work will be done in VR because it's such a huge benefit. So, if you, um, I think for if if you're a young designer just starting, I think it makes a lot of sense to look into this because. Then you can be ahead of like your your uh, colleagues um, because this field is just 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 starting, and everybody has to to figure out how it's how it's used uh, or how it, how you can benefit best from from the new possibilities. But I think it's the right time to get started for anybody like who's curious, who's maybe just starting. But also for people who have a lot of experience and are frustrated with the old limitations. That's something actually we we have a lot of like real fans of our software. Um, they can be like uh, I don't know in, in their fifties, and they say, okay, I've been working on on like surface modeling as it's called 
for for ages now. I know all the professional tools, but it's always such a limitation actually that I felt and I've been looking for something like your tool for for so long now, and finally it's getting there. So this is th that feedback is something that tells us okay we're like we're uh, we've we've found something that's really interesting for many people. These sectors, of course, if you're a if, by the way, we have a freemium model. So if you're if you're just curious, want to get started in doing CAT and have maybe a 3D printer and a VR headset, and I know that there are like tech fans that have both. Um, personally, I'd be exactly that person if I was not working here. Um, then yeah, <laughs> this is why I'm building this also for myself. Um, then you might also try this out because um, I know my sister, for example, and um, her husband, they have a 3D printer and they they can do CAD, but it's it's always get started, hard to get started. And with flying shapes, it's way easier. And so you, if, if that's your use case, try it out. You can use it for free and it's pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, we'll definitely have a look there. Um, just talk a tiny bit more about Flying Shapes, the company and your team. How many people do you guys actually have right now? Uh, right now we're 11. So um, I, I would like to have like double that number, but um, we're working on that. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, the company, well, we founded Flying Shapes in uh, 2018, in May. We started the project, like I said, in 2016. Uh, so there was quite some time that uh, Jonas and I worked on it on our own, doing the development behind the scenes. Uh, well, we all, actually, we the first time we showed it to the public was already in 2017 at, at CeBIT, which is a huge like computer fair here in Germany. We we won a, a booth there in the startup area in a... In a competition, um, and uh, that was that was a cool story actually because um, we learned only like two weeks before we actually had before the CBIT started that we would have that booth, and back then we had a prototype that kind of worked, but we there was nothing else, so there was no company name, there was no design, there was no website, no uh, yeah, no business cards. And all of that needed to be like completed within two weeks. And that was quite intense, but it was a huge success. So people were, there were actually people from the, it was a very early prototype. We had been working three months on that. And there were people from, I think Audi, or at least from, from huge car manufacturers that were standing at our, at our booth and said, whoa, this is, this is cool. This is impressive. We want to, we want to learn where this is going keep keep us keep us uh, up to date about where you where you are and that was an amazing like start actually back then that just as an anecdote um and well, well one more question how you guys are actually financed um yeah well we um we started with our own money but um that we ran out of that soon especially when it comes to hiring people, of course, you need um, funding. And so this is why we went the start standard startup way. We we pitched at different pitching events and we're looking for investors. On the one hand, business angels. On the other hand, um, VCs or, yeah, other investors. And um, so we've uh, completed two financing rounds now, a pre-seed and a seed round. Pre-seed was last year. Seed is... We've only just recently released the the announcement that the um, it's called ISB Innovations und Strukturbank um, Rheinland-Pfalz. So it's a state-funded um, VC um, that has invested, plus the last round, and they also uh, joined in this round uh, is a local. Um, yeah, Mittelstand company, so uh, mid-sized corporation. Um, Bito, Bito Campus is their investment arm, 
and it's it's like a corporate VC. They invest into startups that they find interesting from a strategic perspective, and they are located here in Rhineland Palatinate. And um, they did the first the first round, and like I said, they joined also in the second. And um, yeah, I mean, we'll go on with um, like subsequent investments because it makes a lot of sense for us to scale the business to to a larger scale because um, yeah, this is what what makes most sense for us. We don't want to only build a tool that's cool for um, for designers. We want to at some point build a VR cat platform. So this is where we are going. And it's a bit like, um, I don't know if your audience knows Onshape, maybe they have been called a unicorn. I don't know about their current status, actually. Um, uh, they might have been bought, but I'm not sure. Um, so Onshape is one of the our idols in that sense because they have taken cat and transformed it to mobile so you can use cat on in the browser or on an ipad for example with their solution and they've also built an a whole ecosystem so you can get a, lo a whole lot of plugins for that and that's it's it's a, it's a huge ecosystem that has um, like established around that tool and this is what we want to build for vr cat um, on the other hand, you could compare it to something maybe your audience also knows Unity. They're also, in some sense, still a startup. Um, <clears throat> it's a very common game engine, but it's also very common in VR. So actually, also our software uses it. Um, and they've also, I think they've just done another funding round. Uh, and they've got a multi-billion uh, valuation. And they have a freemium model on the one hand. And on the other hand, they have... A huge ecosystem of um, other companies that sell their their add-ons to the to the engine on their Unity asset market asset store, and like these two um, models are a bit like our landmarks for where we want to get at some point. Um, so next year we we plan to do a Series A funding round. And for this, of course, I mean, we're not actively looking for anything right now because we just uh, finished our seed round and uh, we're quite busy working on the building up the sales force for our team, like for a, to to, yeah, get uh, get to the revenues that we want to achieve this year. And um, yeah, for next year, we look for investors that are interested in a deep tech software as a service startups such as Flying Shapes and who believe in VR as a technology. And um, so, yeah, I think we, we're talking about sometime mid next year when we probably going to, when we're probably going to, to raise the next round. And um, yeah, anybody who feels like this could be interesting for him, maybe because he, she is interested in, in the car sector or design in general or deep tech um, VR collaboration solutions. Everybody who can relate to any of these subjects is very welcome to reach out to us. Um, we are, yeah, there, there's going to be a next round. There's going to, we have a huge uh, potential that we see in the development of this company. And uh, we're very happy to, um, to, tell you more about our vision uh, anytime you, you reach out. And everybody who'd like to reach out and learn more, go down here in the show notes. There is a link to our website and on our blog post on the website, there is the link to reach you directly, your LinkedIn profile, as well as the company website. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very happy to connect and um, yeah, it would be great. So. I would be very happy if we find find more people. Uh, our existing investors deeply believe in our vision, I think, and I think they are they're going to be more people who who see this potential of a breakthrough solution in the cat and design industry on the one hand, but also in the VR tech sphere and the collaboration and and jo who join in on that VR cat platform vision. 
great. It, it was one of the interviews that I had to say the least, which is great because the audience already knows me and knows my voice. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you and will be definitely one of the longest interviews we had this year. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It was great talking to you. And yeah, thanks. Thanks for, for having me. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.